The views and opinions expressed by the Orc of Ominous, the Wicked Nemesis, are of my own and no one else, nor do they reflect beyond ringside. So, ladies and gentlemen, due to the graphic nature of this program, listener discretion is advised. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the To Be Determined show right here on TNT-Radio.net. I am the Oracle of Ominous, the architect of intellect, the wicked nemesis, and joining me is always are my co-hosts, the former NWA Women's World Champion, Tasha Simone. Tasha, how you doing tonight, sis? Um, despite some of the tragedies this country has had, I am moving right along. I am still pro-gun, and... God bless those little babies who won't be home for Christmas next week. We need to have a moment of silence for them. I'm going to be really serious this week about some things. And ladies and gentlemen, the Magic City Motormouth, GCW Commissioner, the man of many hats, he is fast. Eddie Lane. Eddie, how you doing tonight? I've got so many hats, I've worn a track in the top of my head. It's not a yarmulke. It's like I'm Italian, so therefore it's a balding spot. No, it's... God played golf and forgot to replace the divot. And I agree wholeheartedly. Yes, Tasha, you're right. There have been some great tragedies, not only here in America, but around the world this um, over the last few days. And I'm on board with you. Thoughts, prayers, positive vibes all the way across the board. We're actually going to jump straight into that. Uh, everyone here at TNT-Radio.net, uh, all the Nemesis family, and I'm sure I speak for everyone on this radio show right now, our hearts and prayers and thoughts and good vibes go out to all those affected, especially those immediately, to those babies that were slaughtered in Connecticut and to the children that were stabbed in China, the 22 children were stabbed, and to the, uh, to the child that was shot in Heflin, Alabama by his crazed uncle. And we're so glad that the police were there at St. Vincent's the very next morning after that shooting, stopping what would be another shooting at a severely sick children's hospital. Ladies and gentlemen, December 21st is coming right around the corner, what have you. It, it's not the end of the world, but it's definitely the beginning of the end times. It's in Revelations. If you believe in the Bible, whether or not, there's a lot of crazy shit going on. Be prepared for that zombie apocalypse come December 22nd. But if we will, I would like to take and give just a few seconds, a moment of silence, if you will, for those that we lost this past week in such a tragedy. Now, I know it's a hard transition, but we are going to transition into professional wrestling uh, because that's what we cover here. Uh, we are here to entertain, to educate, and enlighten everyone around, especially those in the business. So we're going to make that hard transition, and maybe we'll have a few jokes. Maybe we'll lift spirits. Maybe we might educate you, and if you listen, you definitely will learn something. So we're just going to jump head first into it. Ladies and gentlemen, the NWA's favorite portion of this very show right here, the To Be Determined show. It's time for the former NWA Women's World Champion, Tasha Simone, to let us know what Tasha knows best. Tasha, what do you know best this week? This week I am going to broach a very, very, very important subject that, quite frankly, a lot of people are afraid to talk about. We talk about it in the locker room in a joking manner. Um, the veteran, the veterans, some veterans, I should say, actually encourage the rookies to participate in this lifestyle. I want everybody that listens to this to understand professional wrestling is not just something that we do on the weekend. Professional wrestling becomes a lifestyle. It's about going to the gym. It's about the certain people that you were around all the time. It's about your activity in and out of the ring, um, in the locker room, the people you talk to. It's also something that can become a rock star lifestyle, even on the indie circuit. And we've all seen them. Some of us have participated in it. Um, the fans have heard the stories. The guys who get bombed out of their minds, they have car accidents, um, some of them much more tragic. They lose their lives. A good friend of mine that was on the show here a few weeks ago, I'm going to use as a very shining example right now. While we have all at one time or another, where, whether it's drugs, whether it's alcohol, whether it's both or not, 
we have all at one time or another probably participated in that rock star lifestyle. But people or lives are all more important than that. Professional wrestling will take hold of you if you allow it to. A young man who was on, as I said a few weeks ago, one Wolfie D was, I use him as an example because I think he and Jamie are two of the most well-known for the Rockstar lifestyle, unless you want to bring Scott Hall and Buff Bagwell into the mix. But the reason that I want to use Wolfie as an example is because Wolfie has taken the time to say, my life is more important to me than this. I still want to be successful as a professional wrestler, but I want to be alive to remember it. Wolfie is not only continuing to battle his demons, but he is stepping out and saying, this is what we all need to do to better ourselves. He's talking to rehab groups, and there are some things that, when I say we don't address this, we're all in the locker room, we all know that one guy or that one girl who's blitzed out of their mind. I have a right ear drum, already had previous damage, but is totally fucked up now from somebody going to the ring with me that was blitzed out of their mind. Had she been in the ring with somebody who was less experienced than me, another girl would have probably gotten hurt really, really bad. Do I get mad about it for a minute because it's my hearing? But at the same time, we have to remember this is how professional wrestling has always been. We don't talk about it. We just accept it. So we don't go up to that young kid and say, hey, maybe you shouldn't do that. Most of the guys are going to walk up and say, hey, kid, have another drink. The fans don't understand that we do that as professional wrestlers, whether it's the alcohol, whether it's the pills, whether it's both. They truly do not understand what we put our bodies to work. A lot of the guys that go in the ring because of the things they do in the ring have a hard time functioning without pain pills every day. So for the fans who hear the stories about all the guys taking the pills and drinking the, the alcohol and thinking, oh, they're just a bad person, no, it doesn't always mean they're a bad person. You need to remember what they're putting their bodies through to make sure that you see good matches. So don't use the dense moniker of fake wrestling when you remember that these people are having battles with substance abuse. The older guys who have battled it, like Wolfie D, I commend them 100% for telling the young guys you don't have to be blitzed out of your mind all the time. So the young guys who want to live that rock star lifestyle, you can still party like a rock star and you can do it half-assed sober. You don't have to stay blitzed out of your mind. This is a very, very serious thing that has been prevalent in professional wrestling since way before I became active in the ring. It will continue to be so. But as our society is changing, we need to do more to take care of each other. It's not just about being in the ring. If you really care about somebody, if you're a really close friend with somebody and you see that they're having a problem, okay, we even mentioned it last week about the GCW locker room not having a bunch of drunks in it. That's how prevalent it is when we judge a locker room by how many drunks are in it. Um, it used to be that somebody could have a drink and go to the ring and wrestle. It's not that way anymore. We're talking about sloppy drunks. We're talking about people that are so drugged out in their minds they don't know who they are. They're not coherent. This is another issue that we truly need to take control of as professional wrestlers. But I need the fans to understand they're not always just doing it to be those rock stars. Sometimes they're doing it because we beat the hell out of our bodies so that they know they got their money's worth every night of the week. And that's what Tasha knows best. Very uh, serious problem. Uh, I don't believe it's in, just in wrestling. I believe it's in society in general. Uh -huh. uh, as, uh, as I've said before, as you all know, I lost plenty of followers this week, and I will say this uh, pertaining to what you're saying. Last Friday night, I went out and bought a box of bullets at Walmart. 
all they did was check my my ID to make sure I was 19. That same trip, that same trip to Walmart, I tried to purchase some cold medicine. Just some they cold medicine. Carded. They wrote down my name. They wrote down mm-hmm. my driver's license, when my driver's license expired, my social security number, my address, and the milligrams of what I was getting. I told them I was mm-hmm. not comfortable with this. They said that they had to do this. I made it a point the people to tell, take math. I made it a point to tell her. I just went and bought a box of bullets, and all they did was check my ID. Didn't write down a single thing. I don't even have a gun permit, but yet I got a box of bullets like that. There is a prescription mm-hmm. drug problem in this fucking world, especially in the United States. Period. Now we all know this. Now when you go to the doctor, where they ask you, what, what on a scale of one to ten, what's your pain level? When I was a kid, they never asked you that. Now that I've gotten uh-huh. older, that's one of the last things they ask you. So, uh, yes, I believe that Scott Hall is kind of a bad example because you're talking about somebody who already had uh, uh, demons, who already had uh, substance abuse issues when he was uh-huh. in the National Football League before he ever got arrested. And I think that just kind of transcribed right. and kind of you know added to it. I think Wolfie it D. I think, I, I think Wolfie D. is the best example, if you will. I know that Wolfie D. is somebody. Uh, near and dear to your heart. But as a kid, he was the one guy that uh, we always heard about, and you're just like, wow, those guys, they party. I mean, I mean, and that's what we talked about. You know, we, we, we didn't really ask him about that because, you know, we, he's he's grown past that. But his exploits are pretty rather legendary, as are some of the, as you said, it's not, and it's not just to the big leagues. There's a lot of guys in the Indies and a lot of girls in the Indies that that have that mm-hmm. moniker of being a party animal. You know, somebody that uh, every chance they get, you know, you're like, look at them fucked up again. We all know who they are. Mm-hmm. But, Tasha, you know this. Any time that I'm on a card with somebody, I see something's going on, I make it a point to go and tell them, hey, maybe you might want to wait. Will Owens. Mm-hmm. Will Owens. Wild thing, Will Owens. As soon as he finishes his match... He's fucking popping tops. As soon as he finishes his match, but as soon as he finishes his match, he will not touch anything before that match. And and if if Will Owens and those type of guys can do it, but now we know those guys that abuse them. We all know those uh-huh. people, those guys and girls that, that abuse them that don't necessarily need them. We know the, oh, man, I've got a shoulder ache. Mm. He's got a shoulder ache? You wrestle once a week. Don't 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 try to hide the fact that, that you're an addict, but you know I mean. A lot of times these guys and girls have to hit rock bottom before they realize what needs to be done and that they need help. So, Tasha, once exactly. again, once again, a serious issue. Uh, we hope that this helps somebody. Uh, maybe there's somebody in the business that that needs some help. Ask for help. Don't be ashamed to ask for help. I promise you, there's somebody that can help you. And to the promoters that let these uh, these men and women go out there under the influence, obviously, even I don't care, and we all know we all know who they are. They go out, and they're like, "Well, you know, uh, I don't want to piss them off. I, I need them to draw money. You can draw money with your own people. You don't need mm-hmm. flakes like that." But that's just well, my opinion. And, and something that everybody needs to understand as well. You don't, we're not saying, and I don't want anybody to say, oh, be straight edge, don't go drink. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying if you have a true ache, don't take a pill for it. Now, me, I'm, I'm the other end of the spectrum. Am I sitting here on my high horse saying I don't drink? Absolutely not. I do drink. You know, I'm not saying that. But when I had my knee surgery... I gave the doctor back the prescription for the oxycodone that he wrote me. I didn't take anything because I don't want something covering up a problem, and that's all it does. When the pill wears off, you just have to take another one. And that's where the guys fall into a problem. We put our bodies on the line. Professional wrestlers don't have insurance, and I guess that's why I'm addressing the fans as much as I'm addressing the wrestlers, because there are a lot of fans who say, oh, he's just a drunk. 
and they don't understand the things that we do to our bodies and the feeling. I mean, there are days when you have to roll out of bed rather than just stand up out of bed because of the abuse that we put our body through. So I'm not saying that there are not reasons. It's not all just about having a good time. That's not always what it is. But the people who are doing it to have a good time need to remember if you can't remember what happened the night before, how do you know you even had a good time? Well, look, and if but let's you have an ache or a pain, well, I was just going to say, if you have an ache or pain and when the pill wears off, it's still hurting and you have to take another one, maybe you need to go get it fixed instead of just covering it up. Well, let, let's put this in perspective. Uh, a lot of times after after an event... <clears throat> Eddie, uh, I want to get your opinion on this, too. Uh, and, Tasha, you can attest to this. After an event, after all the bumps and bruises, what do you do most of the time? You go and you get in the car. and, and the you bar. Know, hopefully, hopefully you're getting a chance to uh, have somebody with you or, ha- or mm-hmm. have a few guys, few guys or girls riding with you. You get in a car, you go to a bar. And what do you do that? Then you turn around and you leave and you drive. And a lot of times you're driving, what, six, seven, eight hours one way? During that time, after the, after the adrenaline wears off, you start to hurt, but you're cramped mm-hmm. up. And if you had to stop the car every time that somebody had to piss or every time that somebody's somebody's like, man, I've got a cramp, I've got a spasm, man, you'd be stopping to take you 15 hours to get home. Exactly. That's when the pills and the alcohol set in right there. To me, that's when it mm-hmm. is. It's after the event when the adrenaline's wore off and when the fans are gone and, the, and then you're there. And, and, and sometimes it's just you. That's so you're like, hey, I'll pull over and I'll, and I'll get something, or you'll you'll smoke this, or you'll pop that. I mean, it, that's the reality of it. That that's the reality of sports in general, but especially wrestling and or sports entertainment, because you get in a mm-hmm. fucking rental car, or you get in your car and you drive to the next town. Or those of us do. Some people go straight home, and but you know, we're not we're talking about the ones that actually go from town to town. Mm-hmm. So, Eddie, and your when you this. get to that town, you. You'll have to bust your ass no matter how bad you hurt. Yes, ma'am. Eddie? I can totally understand every perspective on this because I've gone through a drinking problem. Um, I was what was referred to as a sociable drinker. I drink to become sociable sometimes. Um, It sounds comedic, and sometimes it is, and sometimes it's not. And... I saw what I was doing before I ever went to the doctor and it's like, dude, you got to back off this crap. The only vice that I have a problem with right now is cigarettes. And that's something that I'm actually working on trying to cut back on. You know, I'm one of the ones nowadays I'll light it up, take two hits, put it out to where I can come back an hour and a half, two hours, three hours later, light it up and do it again. Um, I've never let myself be in a position to where the painkillers would come into play. I've had trouble with my back, trouble with my left knee, and that's pain that I stay in. Sure, I've had opportunities at all of the above. I have a doctor who's like, dude, if you're in pain, I'll give you something for the pain. It's like, no, first of all, don't need it. Don't want it. Not going to have it. I'll I'll go home and take myself a double shot of Jägermeister, or I'll just take a double shot of NyQuil, and I'll go crawl in bed and see if I can sleep it off and get back in the right positioning. Um... But you're right. And here's one of the things that something that I'm going to take one little thing that Tasha said, and I want to run with it for a second. The I word insurance. This is something that's been a pet peeve of mine. Now, granted, we're independent contractors, and I understand that. Which means in a lot of realms, yeah, your contract labor. You're brought in to do this sometimes one night, sometimes recurring. But I do believe that it's going to come to a point where some promoters are going to have to find a way to encompass the workers on a show under their umbrella. I know a lot of promoters do have insurance. I know a lot of promoters don't have insurance. And this is most the, don't. I most know. don't. Let's be honest. Most Let's be don't. honest. Yeah, you're right. 
I know a lot of them have to have, in certain states, liability insurance to cover the venue and Mm -hmm. some personal injury. I think on that personal injury side for the responsible promoters that they should be able to extend that situation to the workers and wrestlers who work that event. Some companies won't let them do it. Some will. Depends on the track record and exactly what type and policy the wording is. Um, do I think that it's a situation where if you, you know, you're coming off the ropes and you accidentally hit your, you stub your toe and go face first and crack your nose. Is that something that's going to be applicable? No, but if you're doing a specialty match, like a ladder match, tables, match, chairs, match, kind of like we saw in abundance this past Sunday on a certain company's pay-per-view, there were some people who came out of pay-per-view. Believe it or not, yeah, and it was actually pretty good, um, especially the six-man tag match, the the Tornado Rules TLC, that sudden death, whatever it was, I'll explain during the last 30, which was actually worth the cost of the pay-per-view by itself, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that later. But yeah, we talk about the respect for this industry. We talk about respect for each other. We talk about respect for ourselves and this sport. Notice Smart Rage couldn't drink yet because I haven't said this business. Oops, just did. The camaraderie that we share is something that you can't match when you've got people in that locker room who have a clue about each other, take the time to learn each other, take the time to get to know and become friends with each other. Screw the politicking. Throw it out the window. Everybody wants to be champion. If you don't, get the hell out of this business. Everybody wants to be the best. If you don't, get the hell out of this business. But we should look out for each other a little bit more. There have been times when I've gone to the post-match parties and it's like I'm either the most intoxicated person there or I'll be the most sober person there. It goes to extremes. But I'm also the one to sit back and say, I'm not driving. I'm calling a cab and I'm getting a hotel room right around the corner. I'll come back and get my car tomorrow. No matter how foobar I am, I can still do that if needed. Or it's like, dude, I can't drive. Just Plant me in the back seat, put the keys under the hood, and I'll get them in the morning. Or if I'm sober, I'll offer a ride. It's like Sunday night. I mean, this past Sunday night after a show, I went out and had a nice couple of pitchers of beer with a couple of really close friends of mine in this business. And the first thing I did when we were getting ready to go is I asked, are y'all okay? Now, granted, we've only gone through three pitchers of beer, so I know all three of us pretty much have a strong tolerance. But I still want to make sure. Because I respect my friends and my coworkers like that. And that's something that we can all learn a little bit more from. Don't just respect wrestling. Respect yourself and respect each other, Wick. Back to you. Once again, we have to make that transition from serious because that was something serious. Uh, back into professional wrestling as a whole. Ladies and gentlemen, we are asking a question each week, as most of you know, our loyal listeners. Our question this week, who is Wrestler of the Year? Not Superstar of the Year. Who is Wrestler of the Year? Tasha, I want to get your thoughts on this. We're actually going to talk about this right after the break coming up. And this will be a question throughout the night. Uh, We'll ask Smart Rage. uh, Smart Rage, for those checking in, for the Smarks Rage, that will actually be taking place at 10.05 or 10.03 Central Standard Time tonight on this very show. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go ahead. We're going to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, we want to know who is your Wrestler of the Year for 2012 right here on TNT-Radio.net on the To Be Determined show. If you're wanting to get in touch with us, You can Skype us at Beyond Ringside. Is that one word, Eddie? Yes, it is. Beyond Ringside, one word. Or you can call us at 702-605-0249, or we prefer you call us at 205-316-9900. But you can take your pick. Ladies and gentlemen, don't change that URL. The To Be Determined Show, right here, tnt-radio.net. The views, the opinions, and the absolute attitude that I will express anytime you hear the name Tasha Simone 
are mine and mine alone. They are in no way, shape, form, or fashion those of Beyond the Ringside, nor are they from the station that broadcasts the show. I will also tell you, Pete, you better cover the little kitty's ears, because this is not PG-13. This is, as always, when Tasha speaks, to be determined, which means there's no rating that can tell you how bad this content can get. Ladies and gentlemen, the To Be Determined Show right here on TNT-Radio.net. I am the Orc of Ominous, the Architect of Interlake, being joined once again by Fast Eddie Lane and Tasha Simone. Now, before we went to our first break, I asked everyone their Wrestler of the Year. Eddie, I'm going to ask you first. In 2012, encapsulating everything to this very day, we'll say up until last night live on SmackDown, with the entire year as it was, who is your wrestler of the year for 2012, sir? I've got a four-way tie, number one. Um, Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, you and your fucking ties. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. Truth be told, I'm going to lay it down like this, and I'm going to draw heat from different people. And on this is more on the indie level because I'm not even going to take the Nationals into consideration. Uh, all the way across the board, and this is in no particular order. Uh, Micah Taylor, Tasha Simone, Tracy Taylor, and O'Hagan. They have proven themselves to be four of the hardest working people in this business. They've worked all around every opportunity when they've had the, when it's been placed in front of them, when they've gotten a chance to be booked on shows, they constantly bust their asses to try to become better at what they do. I give credit where credit is due. My hat is off to them. O'Hagan has had a stellar year. Micah Taylor's been in the ring every chance he's gotten. Tracy Taylor's gone to so many different areas. And Tasha Simone has represented herself as a true champion in every sense of the word and backs it up every time she gets in the damn ring so that's why i've got to say it's a four-way split for those reasons right there well i'm gonna go mainstream because as i've said several times and I've, as we've all said if if the national televised shows better yet if wwe isn't doing good business none of us are doing good business if somebody goes and they see a good monday night raw or by the slim chance they happen to see a good TNA, they're going to go to an indie show and be like, man, I'm hyped up. That makes me want to go see Tasha Simone beat the shit out of somebody. That makes me, man, you see how those women were, man? You know, they kind of got at it, but I want to see somebody really wrestle. That's what it's all about. Now, I can both, I can both smoke up anybody's ass. I'm going to give you guys a list of a few people that, that will be honorable mentions. One of my honorable mentions goes to somebody that a lot of us know, somebody that has been going on for, for, for some time. That person, Kyle Matthews. Okay. Kyle Matthews did – he was in every state that I know of with the exception of Alaska and Hawaii, and I know he's, he's done some stuff in a lot of promotions uh, several times. But encapsulation and looking at everything that he's done – throughout and all the fine work he's done i mean jesus christ the guy tried to carry ace haven and uh whatever the hell that stupid <laughs> shit they did and and the reviews were horrible and kyle matthews is a hell of a worker he's not a wrestler he's he a is. worker he is a great great person with that being said he gets an honorable mention sean tempers a man that held that title with such prestige the NWA North American Championship. Is it North American Heavyweight Championship? Yep. It's just the North American title. The North American title. Mm-hmm. He held that for a while, quite a long time. Sean Tempers completely defended this. Tasha, you saw the man firsthand. Mm-hmm. The man... The man Went through some things at the end. Uh, controversially, lost the title. Uh, Tasha, for those that want to check out the archives, which I'm sure you'll never see the light of day unless you want to uh, have sex with a pastry for him. Uh, <laughs> she went and actually gave glowing reviews for Sean Tempers, but I worked with Sean for two and a half years. Uh, 
the temptation Sean Tempers is one of those guys that's just he just makes everybody better. He has great He's a good matches. guy. He's a good and guy. And he's a good guy. And he's a good guy. And he's a good guy. You know, I like douchebags, being one myself. Tempers isn't. <laughs> he plays one. He's one of those guys. It's not really him. It's just an extension of him. Another one. Danny Only, the human hand grenade. Danny Only's year this year was cut short, having to go uh, do some duty overseas. But Danny Only, the human hand grenade. When I first met Danny, nobody wanted to book Danny. Nobody wanted Danny to wrestle. Danny wanted it so bad. Danny Only wanted it so fucking bad that he went out and busted his ass and got better. In the process, he actually came up with a motto, a mantra that I think a lot of people need to get on their minds. And Tasha, you'll love this. He actually has a t-shirt, Barbershop Window, sold out in two days of this shirt, because a lot of people saw the mantra, not even knowing who the fuck Danny only was. Not even knowing. I, I termed him the harbinger of hate five or six years ago, five years ago. I named him that. And he ran with it for years. He came up with a human hand grenade, and that's exactly what he is. He is the human hand grenade Danny only. Get better or get out. Plain and, and simple. Right. Get better or get out. With that mantra, Danny only got better. And when he comes back, I'm going to say it's not like it, he's going to be rusty maybe for one or two matches, but other than that, he'll pick up. Just like riding a bicycle. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And he has a year, one year off. I feel bad for everybody. One year. Another honorable mention goes to Tasha Simone. Tasha had a great year. Tasha battled some of the best. And in my opinion, she had independent wrestling match of the year, hands down, bar none. Anything, no matter what, even if I wasn't involved in it, still had match of the year because of what happened. 58 minutes. Tasha Simone and Kyle Michaelbaum Pandora beat the hell out of each other. For anybody that was there, for anybody that saw that, that was a war. That was a fight. That was a brawl. That was a match. That wasn't a women's match. That was a wrestling match. That match personified women's wrestling and what it should be. Although... It was a no holds barred match. That match right there made people remember what it was like to be a women's wrestling fan. Every once in a while you'll get that glimmer. Jessica Havoc, even though I don't agree with a lot of things she says, even though I don't agree, but she's out there at the forefront making sure that there's women's matches that people still talk about. Tasha was at that forefront. Tasha was ahead of the surf. Tasha went out and defended that title every chance she could. Unfortunately, she lost the title to Casey Carlisle. <laughs> Casey is now the champion, but Tasha defended that champion the third most days ever in the history of the NWA Women's Championship, the crown jewel in the whole sport of professional wrestling. Not just the NWA, but everything. That is the crown jewel when it comes. There's only one real women's championship. WWE has their, has their world champion. NWA has their world champion. WWE has their heavyweight champion. Ring of Honor has a world champion. How many... Women's champions can call themselves a world champion. One. 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 And my final honorable mention for Wrestler of the Year. This is going to surprise a lot of people. But this person went out and totally destroyed everything that, that needed to be done 
And in my book, might be one of those people that when you look back, you're like, you know what? We really didn't know how good his year was. We really didn't know where it set back. That person, or just on the independent scene, now this is strictly on the independent scene, is Corey Hollis. Corey Hollis was in like 500 promotions. <laughs> Corey Hollis did some stuff for Ring of Honor. He was one of those guys that no matter what, he got a scathing review. Was it the end of last year he got that scathing review from, from Dipshit? Yeah. Eddie? Yes. A lot of people would have sat back and been like, oh, man, I can't believe this. He didn't. He kept his head up and kept going forward. You look at Corey, man, I've known Corey almost his entire career. Corey is like a little brother to me. That is true. Now, th now this is, I'm just, truth be told. But Corey went out and made sure that everybody at every promotion made sure that they're like, hey, man, Corey Hollis, when's he coming back? And he didn't just stay at one, besides Rampage, he didn't just stay at one promotion. He would jump around. And even when Jimmy Rave approved broke apart, he was still there. When he was tagging with Mike Posey, whether he was doing stuff on his own, whether he was doing stuff up front, he was right there. And he made sure that great matches were around everywhere. Does he do too much? Yeah, probably. But there's other times where he goes out there and completely destroys it. One person I wasn't going to use for honorable mentions, O'Hagan, but then it makes it sound like I'm blowing smoke up to the desk. Congratulations to O'Hagan for winning the GCW championship, by the way. A, a great year. The reason why I didn't use O'Hagan is one of those is because O'Hagan primarily stayed in GCW. O'Hagan had the greatest year for any GCW wrestler since Bishop had a few years ago. Yep. And that's the truth. But my wrestler of the year goes to CM Punk. Of everything being said, CM Punk made sure whether it would drop quote unquote pipe bombs, what have you, the hill turn, et cetera, et cetera. He made sure that he went out. Whether he was on comic book, man, a lot of people don't know. Uh, Mabo and I, a uh, tag team partner of ours on Beyond Ringside, we listened to Smodcast, Kevin Smith's uh, uh, podcast that he has. And they have a bunch of different podcasts. One of them is from the guys that do comic book, man, uh, called I Sell Comics. He went on there and healed them out. Because he had just turned heel. And to this day, they still call him a piece of shit and how he's trash and everything. But you know what? They still talk about him. Yep. CM Punk went out, and CM Punk did what every wrestler should do as a heel. He went out and told them, did he get his cheap heat? Yeah. But, but a lot of the guys, my son is not accustomed to that being on TV. The first time he went after the fans... Our truth when our truth went after the fans uh, before he turned babyface, uh, you know when you see that on WWE you're like oh my god when you see it on TNA you're like not again yeah and it's because of that being sports entertainment but he is a wrestler he is one of the the he's in that mold of douchebags and only the people that that respect him like him. You don't have to like him, but you have to respect him. You have to respect his work. Guys, I had a great year. The MOD as a whole had a great year. Tasha, I know you had a great year. Eddie, did you have a great year? Loved it. That was all because our hard work, all because we went out there and we made sure that every time we went out that we did what we had to do. I managed Pandora this year. I managed Chris Knox. I managed Crew Jones. I managed CJ Awesome. I managed... Somebody I never thought I'd manage my entire life being J-Rod. I was in a steel cage match. I wrestled against Joey Sartain. I destroyed Damon Taz. Hell, I resurrected Damon as Damon Christopher. Thank you. And you saw Chris Knox go back from being B-Fit. I took one of the biggest baby faces in this entire region. And that is a complete shoot being Damon Taz. I will tell you guys this. Eddie knows this. Tasha, I'm not sure if you know this, but he, when he went, he sold. And he did the Brodus Clay shit. Damon was probably 150 pounds heavier than what he was, what he is now. 
and he went out there and he would shake his ass and go out and you know and hug babies and you know and you know the old women would would hug on him you know and and pull his hair and uh, smack him on the ass, but he went out and he brought people in. There were times that Buff Bagwell would tell you, people were there to see Damon, not him. We killed that off. We buried him in a promotion that I was booking for called ACW. We buried him in Carbon Hill. I brought Brian Blaze and Jeter, the Ghetto Godzilla Jeter, up to the forefront. Those two guys right there were added to the Merchants of Death. I had the tribulation. I had a guy have a heart attack in the middle of a promo. I started a riot, and I wasn't even there. I started four riots this year. Four riots alone where people were throwing stuff, where we had to be escorted out, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. None of that would have mattered had not CM Punk went out and brought back WWE style because people went out and they're like, yeah, there's still a few people. I hate you, but they still come back. Had they not seen that, they'd have been like, well, fuck this. I'm not coming back. But they saw that, like, oh, 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 he wants to be like WWE. He want, he, they want to go out and do that. And then they would go out and they would compare us to them, but they would still come out. CM Punk is Wrestler of the Year. I know he didn't win the Slammy for Superstar of the Year. Eddie actually has a clip for us uh, pertaining to Ric Flair, Ric Flair coming back. Uh, the Smarks Rage, I don't know what, what Corey's going to talk about. I want to ask him his Wrestler of the Year. But this clip coming up, Eddie, let me know whenever you're ready. This clip coming up is one of those clips where you're just like, wow. First of all, Ric Flair coming back. CM Punk doing his thing. Right. But still, CM Punk injured was there. Eddie, you ready? Forget about it! <laughs> Sorry, wrong clip. Damn it, I hate it when that happens. <laughs> <laughs> that is priceless. I can't wait for this to go up on YouTube. <laughs> okay. I, actually, I thought you were going to throw to Tasha first for her Wrestler of the Year. Tasha doesn't have her. Tasha's Wrestler of the Year is herself. Tasha? No, my Wrestler of the Year is really not myself. Um, <sighs> I have two Wrestlers of the Year, and I'm going to qualify it because everybody's going to say, oh, it's because you work with them, and yes, it kind of sort of is. Eric and Derek. Um, my Wrestlers of the Year would be Eric and Derek, and the reason why... <laughs> Um, we traveled to several NWA promotions all year. Eric Andrews actually wrestled um, three days after he had surgery on his foot, was not even supposed to be out of the hospital during the year, um, wrestled Sean Kempers with a full-length knee brace from his ankle to his hip because he had a torn MCL and was not supposed to be in the ring, but actually refused to miss the match because he knew that that was an important match. We made a trip to NWA Houston, actually pulled into Lebanon, Tennessee at Corsica Joe Arena five minutes before bell time. That was a 17-hour trip, and Eric and Derek did over an hour-and-a-half time limit draw. So for me, they are truly my wrestlers of the year because they bust their asses, the same as what Wick is talking about. Um, the guys who just go out and bust their asses, no questions asked, no matter what. It's not about the pay. It's about making sure those fans come back the next week. But I also want to say that my match of the year, and I'm not patting either one of us on the back, it's just the fact of the matter. I don't give a damn about the seven levels of hate or whatever the crap that shit was. Handle and I had match of the year. Whether anybody wants to recognize it anywhere besides on this show every Wednesday night or the next however many days, Handle and I had match of the year. I'll agree. That was everything that a championship match should be about. You, you, the first time you two wrestled, you wrestled for fifty-two fucking minutes, mm -hmm. and that was in January. That's what I'm talking about. I was there for that. Oh my God! Don't get me started on this. But uh, uh, Eric had a great year. Uh, Derek, I'm gonna be honest with you. I wouldn't put Derek in in there, but Eric, yes, Eric had a great well, year. Derek, and, and of course, you haven't seen Derek as much as I have, so yes, and I understand that. You're right. Yes, ma'am. 
in this moment. But Eric had a hell of a year. But Eric, yes, he did. I hope you're listening, Eric. Hell of a year. Went out and busted his ass. And there's a lot of people that didn't know Eric that know Eric now. I promise you that. And GCW actually gave him a standing ovation, him and O'Hagan, after the match. Yep. So, yes, they had an outstanding match. Yes, they did. So, uh, Eddie, oh, by the way, with that clip? by the way, real quick, and you were making a reference to a bad review, and I got to get this in real quick. Some dipshit. Yes, I said that. Um, talked about a match that was held between Kylo Riley and Adam Cole, called Future Shock at the time, versus Alabama Attitude, Corey Hollis and Mike Posey. I want somebody to. I want you to understand something real quick. If it's true, I'll back it up. But the the rocket scientist who wrote this review said made the comment that Hollis and Posey looked like a couple of greenies compared to Future Shock. I'm sorry. What? Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. let me go ahead yeah. and say this in no uncertain terms. And please understand, I'm being me in the nicest form possible. Bullshit. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, I think we actually I'm cussed. saying yeah. bullshit, and I didn't even see the match. I yeah, saw well, the I match. Think we actually cussed uh, Kyla- on ring said That was one of the nights that we, we kind of let loose because we were both pissed at that. I was like, what? Kyle O'Reilly looked like a freaking dork in that match. Absolutely clueless wonder from one side to the next. And for anybody who's been watching Ring of Honor over the last few weeks, you see that I'm right. Plain and well, that was okay, kind well- of his downfall. That was his first match that he had had bad in a while, and, uh, and it showed. But of course they're not going to say anything about the guys that just come on. Of course they're going to say something and save face with the ring. Oh, it was their fault. It was their fault. Well, let me say this, too, for the fans. Quit getting caught up in initials and start looking at the quality in the ring. Yes. Thank you. Because I said this a couple of weeks ago on BR when I was talking about the match um, with Bobby Fish and O'Reilly versus the Bravado Brothers, the Bravado Brothers looked like they should have been World Tag Team Champions at that moment in time. Fish and O'Reilly looked like dog crap. I'm sorry. Bobby Fish just is not over in any capacity whatsoever. He's too vanilla. He's too plain. There's not enough backstory involved in the all of a sudden whiplash on uh, Davy Richards. Everybody kind of saw it coming. So guess what? No surprise there. So there's automatically start on. Um, there's a sardonic outlook on it. Number two, Kyle O'Reilly is about as vanilla as you can possibly get. He has no personality. He doesn't have the look for television. And if the kid could work, I would say that. But the last time I saw um, Kyle O'Reilly in the ring, he looked absolutely horrible. The word pathetic would be considered a grade five compliment. And now that I've said that part, you know something? I had my mark out moment when I came out of my chair, when I heard the voice before the break, and lo and behold. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back to the WWE, the presenter for Superstar of the Year, the Nature Boy, Rick Now, for me, that was a high moment because obviously the deal with TNA is water under the bridge now. Bye-bye. Aloha means goodbye. To see Flair back in WWE television on the night of the Slammies, for me, it was a, it was a genuine case of he just looks like he belongs there. Plain and simple. And the other comment. Now I just came to have a good time. That summed it all up. And for me, that was feel good television. The crap with the shield, the crap with punk. You know, okay, not the crap. the The part of the show with Punk, which was beautifully executed by everybody in there, including Heyman. The announcers made it sound like a million bucks. And then you had the stuff with the shield, where um, Hell No and Ryback pulled the save. Beautifully executed. I have no complaints about that whatsoever. Wick, over to you. Oh, you can't forget. Rod Black was there. Was it a big E? That's later on in the show. We were talking about but, the return of Ric Flair. Well, you're talking about the Slammies in general. Uh, that show, that, that Monday Night Raw, was actually pretty good. Ric Flair coming back, they actually ruined because right before right before the commercial, they, played his they voice. had to go, woo, and I was like, oh, my God. That just gave it away. Had they not done that, I would have been like, holy shit, wow. I don't read the dirt sheets. Uh Uh-uh. So I don't know if people, oh, it's been talked about for months. I don't fucking know. I don't know anything that goes on dirt sheets. When it happens on TV, I'm like, okay. I cannot watch, and Eddie, you and I talked about this, and, and Chris Knox as well. 
I can't watch wrestling anymore and be a fan. I critique it too much. The only reason I watch it is because of this show. If I did not do wrestling, I wouldn't watch it. I'd probably masturbate into a sock. I don't know. <laughs> you take you taking Mabel lessons there. <laughs> No, I, we all know what I would be doing. I would definitely be sitting back and, uh, and listening to archives of me and watching videos of me about me. 45 so seconds. That was so yeah. not a visual I wanted tonight. You Thank and me you. both. I, I, don't, I would not do that. Uh, I have kids, and I'm married, so you know I don't have time for myself for that. But with that being said, <laughs> we want to know your wrestler of the year. You've heard our opinions. We want to hear yours. And coming up next, it's time to fail the rage. The Smarks Rage. Don't change that URL. And also, he's back, Laddie O'Hagan, Joshua O'Hagan, GCW Heavyweight Champion, tonight, right here, tnt radionet own the 2B Determined Show. This is the To Be Determined show where you may, may hear words such as shit, piss, fuck, cunt, cocksucker, motherfucker, and tits. If you're offended by any of those words, don't fucking listen. Ladies and gentlemen, the To Be Determined show right here on TNT-Radio.net. We are asking your wrestler of the year, but coming up right now... We're wasting no time at all. It's time to feel the rage. Corey, it's the Smarts Rage. What are you raging about this week? I'm raging about the tables, ladders, and chair match. Sunday night, people were pissing and moaning about the Brooklyn Baller getting a spot in the six-man tag. They were pissed that Zack Ryder wasn't on the, wasn't on the card. You know, why was Brooklyn Baller? Why, why did they pick Brooklyn Baller? Why not Zack Ryder? Understandably, Ryder probably should have been should have been uh, the tag team on that six man tag. Understand it, newer guy, Brooklyn Ballers, an old school guy. Most of the new generation of fans have no idea who the hell he is. But they were in Brooklyn. It was the home of Brooklyn Baller. It was nostalgia. It was great to see him on on a pay per view. Uh, haven't seen him on TV hardly ever in the past in the past years. He got a great reaction, got a great, got the win. Surprisingly, he got the win. Um, always love seeing Brooklyn Baller. You know, people just piss and moan about pro wrestling too much. You know, I, I, I like to have, I have conversations with people in the business off the record, and we talk about fans pissing and moaning about pro wrestling. And, and granted, I piss and moan all the time myself because if I don't like what I'm watching – and, I, and I'm paying to watch it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to complain about it. But no, nonetheless, you know, I miss the days where, where fans, where you could just go watch a wrestling match and let wrestling take you for the ride. Now, there's, there, you know, I could watch certain wrestlers, you know, certain wrestlers wrestle, um, you know, indie, indie wrestlers, WWE, TNA, and let it take me for the ride that wrestling's supposed to do. And, you know, people, just wrestling fans just nitpick too damn much. You know, and, and wrestling's always been that thing for me where no matter how bad something is going on in my life, whether it, it's drama or stupidity, I could always go watch wrestling and let it do what it's supposed to do, take you away for however long that match is. So quit your bitching. Stop being picky. Shut the fuck up. Turn the program off if you don't like it. The other thing is, what is the deal with re- independent wrestling promotions using WWE title belts as their own titles? Or the promotion here in Stockbridge, Georgia, that the belt looks a, like a plastic belt. Now, Tasha Simone, the former NWA women's champion, a real champion, Wicked Nemesis, the manager of champions. What what you guys' take on it for promotions using using these shitty titles? 
first of all, I'm not the manager of champions. I hate being called that. Uh, <laughs> to me, I don't give a shit. You, about you, you, you know what? No, 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 no. I hope your yeah. mohawk falls Look, down. Let me tell you this. The promotions that can't afford real belts shouldn't even be open. They're probably paying their guys five and ten dollars as it is. So that's my thoughts on that. That's probably the same guys that book people that that are still in gimmicks. But I don't know. Uh, Tosh, I feel that these copy belts that anybody with a credit card and computer access can buy off of HighSpots.com. It's part of what makes wrestling championships mean absolutely nothing. And yep. all of these promotions who use these copycat belts are also using WWE music. They are using guys who are copying WWE gimmicks because they're not original enough to get their own. And all it does is make professional wrestling more of a joke and a backyard production. Corey, what a, is that it? Man, you know what? That's my time. I, I don't even know if that's my rage this week because I'm pretty mellow. <laughs> I, I hear that. <laughs> but uh, bef- be- before you uh, head out, we want to ask you who is your wrestler of the year and why? Well, shockingly, I'm going to say Bully Ray for the simple fact since he broke away from Devon Dudley uh, within the past year, year and a half, he has done big things. I don't know why TNA hasn't put the uh, World Heavyweight Championship on him, but the, the guy's just been, he's been unstoppable. He deserves to be the wrestler of the year. Would make in sense. My, in my opinion. And all right. Ladies and gentlemen, that has been the Smarks Rage with Corey. Corey, thank you so much for coming on. And his wrestler of the year is Bully Ray, straight out of TNA. Thank you, Corey. See you guys next week. Peace. And on the line right now, we have the GCW heavyweight champion, a hell of a model Irish American, and of course, a man that goes by one name and one name only, and that's Joshua O'Hagan. O'Hagan, how you doing tonight, sir? Oh, I'm doing fantastic. How are you doing there, Bruce Knuckles? (laughs) (laughs) What up, Slugger? Now, now, with you heard what Corey just said, and I want to hear your opinion on this. Who is your wrestler of the year? Um, well, if, you, if I'm going to go in categories, as, as much as I hate to say it, because we just got through with a series of matches, um, Micah Taylor has, for the better part of the year, while I was doing you know, wrestling and tag teams and then breaking away, he was defending the GCW title belt. He was wrestling in Georgia and Tennessee. He, you know, recently he's gone to Nigeria and, and done a lot of stuff. And he is an amazing talent who, everywhere he goes, he he seems to find his way to the top of the heat. And as far as like this area right here, I'm I'm going to say Michael Taylor, just because this last year he's had a very very big year. Um, as far as if you're looking at that next level, what people would consider like one of the big two or big three. Um, the two that I think for just their ability to talk in the microphone, the impact that they've made in the year and how much they've grown in that year um, is going to be a tie between uh, Damian Sandow and Antonio Cesaro. Mm, those are some great picks. I like Damian and I like Antonio. Uh, you're saying just because now they're able to work the mic, whereas they were just strictly Matt-based, and strictly of wrestlers, is that what you're saying? Well, they, they've come in, and it's they've they've. Now, Antonio made was always mark. a good wrestler. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and he's really he's come into his own, especially over these last few months. And you don't see him just. I mean, I think tonight he he wrestled Cena for the tribute to the troops, and that's a testament to them showing that they feel like he can be in that kind of match, and he can he can have that kind of match, and. He can. He's an amazing. He's a really good wrestler, and he's doing amazing things with Mike. And and what he has, he's working with it very, very well. And Sandell has just he hit the ground running, and I don't. You know, the sky's the limit for him. 
Do me a favor, Wick, if I could. I'd like to make an addendum because there's somebody I would like to mention on the national level, Austin Aries. Sure. Austin Aries. He hasn't had a bad performance yet, and in the time that he's been with TNA, whether it be through the X Division or the World Championship or um, pr the pursuit of the belts, um, he's gold in the ring. He's gold on the microphone. Um, I think he is probably one of the best talents they've got, and it was a great score for him to come in. Um, logistically speaking, um, I would put him on the same level at, in TNA as what CM Punk was able to do in WWE. And he's gone heel, he's gone face, he's worked tweener, and he's pulled off all three. And so if I have to pick somebody on the national level right now, I'm saying Austin Aries. Yeah, I mean, that was a pretty good pick. Uh, how do you feel, though, about them flip-flopping him? Him being heel face, heel face, whatever. It's TNA. I'm used to the stupidity. <laughs> Hold on, sorry, hold on. Walk, wait, 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 wait. Right into that one. Wait a minute. Do me a favor. I'm going to do a setup, and we're going to use this for. If you missed the To Be Determined show this past Wednesday, you missed this. Now, Wicked, ask the question. <laughs> he forgot the question. Damn it! <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> Lord have mercy on my soul. Anyways, O'Hagan, let me ask you this. With yes. that being said, what do you think about them about the slammy? going to John Cena for Superstar of the Year and him giving the title to Ric Flair. Because I think that's kind of a cop-out. Just about, oh, thanks for coming back, Ric Flair. Don't pawn this right now. I don't know. Um, I think, it, you know, as far as for their company, them looking at the person who has been the Superstar of the Year and for them to hand it to somebody who's been back for, like, what, three minutes? Yeah. I think uh, it kind of downplays the whole thought of, you know, superstar of the year. So, I mean, but it, it does tell you this. As many people as you hear boo John Cena, apparently enough people, you know, send in on the app to vote for him. So it just shows there's just as many people booing for him. And he's, you know, he's a workhorse, and you can't deny that. And him and Punk have been busting their butt for a year now. So, but yeah, just handing it over to Flair just kind of, I don't know, kind of took the meaning off the, the superstar of the year. So like, who's the superstar of the next three minutes? Oh, look, it's the Nature Boy. Rick Flair. <laughs> woo, woo. <laughs> uh, I, I guess I got, a bad, I got a bad taste in my mouth as far as uh, Rick Flair goes. Hmm. Dude, not the only one. Oh no 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 no! He uh, actually, the next, if he's ever back in Birmingham, my blood brother, my brother, is gonna beat him up. So it's pretty funny. <laughs> Probably not the only one. Uh, so, do you, so you actually have the sound bite, Eddie? Can, can we hear this sound bite for this uh, this Ric Flair acceptance speech? What have you? Out of respect <laughs> or the scene, I guess. The superstar of this year, most certainly should be the greatest superstar of all time. The two-time Hall of Fame, Nature Boy, Ric Flair. It is great to see you back where you belong. This, my friend, belongs to you. I got one thing to say to that with all due respect, and there is one particular soundbite that I'm trying to find, and yeah, this is it. It's absolutely atrocious. Thank you. You know, Punk did make a good uh, point. He's like, you've lost the title 16 times. You know, somebody cut that promo uh, before. God, somebody cut that in WCW. They said, you've won it so many times, so that means you've lost it so many times. And I love the fact that he probably saw that on an old WCW. He was like, oh, I'm using that if I ever get a chance. And then Flair was oh. Because as soon as they said that, I said it word for word. And my son was like, wait a minute. How did you know that? I said, that's, you know, and once again, there's nothing new under the sun. And and there it was right there. Coming back, full circle. It's a circle of life of wrestling. Eddie, is there you anything that you... Know, though, um, it was probably Paulie's uh, <laughs> idea to cut that promo in WCW, so yeah. it's his material in the first place. <laughs> well, I love Paul. I think, I think Paul. I think Paul Heyman's reactions were great. 
uh, I think they were genuine because he genuinely started laughing. And he could see, he's like, are you really going to do this? I don't know. It was just funny. Uh, every once in a while, you'll, you'll see Paul, and you can always tell Paul's reaction because he tries to stand up there. And the the four ex-wives made him laugh. And whenever he started saying that Paul was punk's baggage, I thought it was pretty funny as well. But uh, anything you'd like to add, Eddie, about Raw before we move on to what I think everybody's wanting to hear? Um, logistically speaking, I'm going to say this. The pay-per-view, I enjoyed it. Raw Monday night, very good. Uh, the first two matches on the card were extraordinarily rushed. Other than that, it was a solid show. Um, SmackDown Live just seemed like it was a little bit, it seemed like it was a rehash, a revamp, and a revisit. Um, this is where I'm going to sit back and say something that the three of y'all might disagree with. I genuinely think that the WWE right now, if they want to do something like that, three consecutive nights of live television, they need to reset the roster split because it's the same damn people all three nights with the exception of the boogeyman, Ric Flair, and a couple of the other cameo appearances like the Brooklyn Brawler. I'm sorry. The red brand needs to go back to being the red brand. The blue brand needs to go back to being the blue brand. Put the roster split back in place and cultivate even more new stars. Or, or, or maybe this is a radical idea. Maybe it's have more matches. That you do that already, and you're still bringing out the same damn people. Look, the, no, not. I hate to say this, but the high spot of the la- one of the high spots of the last past three days has been the simple fact of the Shield being in there because they're new, they're different. Bitch, please, the Shield. Yeah, right. Okay, sorry that Samuel L. Jackson uh, graphic. Look, 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 look. Antonio Cesaro. Yes. Damian Sandow. Keep going. The Shield. Brodus Clay. Ryback. Ryback. Ry Black, six guys right now, six guys right now. Seven, and then and then, well, if you include the show, that's like fifteen. But there you know, you go. whatever, all new, all new blood, all new blood, all new blood, and that's not including uh, what's the, what's the girl's name, Caitlin? Caitlin? Yeah, uh, she's been here over a year. That's not new. In that case, you got to include AJ Lee. Include AJ. All of those new faces on national TV. Right. They needed to bring people up. You had too many people getting you had too, too many people getting injured, too many people being released, and too many other people being misused. I'm just saying nobody's crime foul foul about Christian not being used. I think isn't he hurt again? Who oh my god, I don't know, probably. Anyways, anything else we'd like to say before we move on? I defer. Blur? I mean, O'Hagan? Uh, you, you can't forget uh, <laughs> Rey Mysterio 2.0. Yeah, <laughs> Sin Cara. Cara, yes. You're right, I'm sorry. Sin Cara as well. Even though he, he messed up quite a bit, he still gets a hell of a reaction. And you know what, though? I, he, him and um, Alberto Del Rio, they actually gave them both some time, and they actually, he actually had a really good match. I think it was like two weeks ago. Yeah. They gave him and uh, Alberto like a good 10, like 15, 20 minutes, and they had a, a really, really good match. So, I mean, if, I think if he's, you know, if he's on a time restraint, yeah, he, he messed it up. But once he's got some time, I think that he can actually do something. And that's why they still keep him there because they, they see that he's got potential. Uh, and he sells he a lot of mass. Yes, he does. <laughs> Bing, 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 bing. Hello. Merchandise Hello. sales. But, uh, but Sin Cara has also gotten better, let's say that, from wherever he was at the very beginning of this year or whenever he first got into where he is now. Leaps and bounds. Are we in agreement on that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just okay. from the, having to, to adapt from the Mexican style to the WWE style, I mean, most guys go to, you know, OVW or FCW and spend six months to a year down there just adapting to it. They threw him in the deep end and just had him swim. So Same thing with ADR. Yeah. I mean, you can see both of them have really kind of grown. So Now, O'Hagan, last week we had you on. Uh-huh. And we had a little... A little segment that we like to call Wrestler's Court. Uh So tonight we have you on. Tasha, I know you're foaming at the mouth over this, and Eddie, so are you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, are we ready for a wrestler's court? <laughs> Tasha, the floor is yours, ma'am. Oh, I'm going to take a deep breath before I start so I can make sure that I use some tact and diplomacy with this. Let me preface this with, and I'm not sure Eddie knows this, we attempted to do um, a back-and-forth type dialogue with myself and the woman who carries my belt, Casey Carlisle. Oh, God. I got pissed off and ended the conversation because I think that if you're going to be a professional wrestling world champion, you need to take your fat ass to the gym. I have quietly sat back and sued and watched her destroy everything that I have worked to accomplish to rebuild and bring dignity to a woman's world title that had been left in the dust. So I have a two-part wrestler's court to pull people up on. The first one is Miss Casey Carlisle, now calling herself the NWA World Women's Champion, who went to Florida on December the 15th for a company formerly known as NWA Ring Warriors. And everybody will understand why, why this is a two-part calling out on the floor of wrestlers court in a moment. Um, I'll get to that in a minute. Miss Carlisle was to have defended the NWA World Women's Title against La Rosa Negra, who has been her only opponent for her first and since was to have been her second title defense. The first defense, this young lady showed up in freaking lingerie and 95% of the match was outside of the ring because they both suck as professional wrestlers. Now, that being said... The minute that you put yourself in a match and you get pinned clean and you're the world champion, that belt means absolutely nothing. It was announced at the last minute that she would not be defending the NWA Women's World title. However, she was expected to wrestle, and she would be wrestling La Rosa Negra for a belt that they affectionately call the Battling Bombshell title and she was pinned clean. So I call her up on charges of being guilty, of being unworthy to be considered a world women's champion, particularly for the NWA, because she can't wrestle her way out of a brown paper bag if she thinks Jim is spelled G-E-M like the Dolly Madison type. The second charge that I bring up on Madison, or on uh, wrestler's court is Howard Brody, owner of formerly NWA Wing Warriors, who after this match, after he allowed the match to not be an NWA Women's World Title match, and after his champion, La Rosa Negra, pinned the so-called Women's World Champion for the NWA, Casey Carlisle, he gets on the microphone and announces, very bluntly, and I don't mind repeating it because it's all over YouTube, that he will not have a lawyer from Texas or a man who sells wine from Texas tell him what to do, and he will no longer be a part of the oldest and, and well-rounded or tradition governing body of professional wrestling ever, the NWA. He did it with no taste and no class and I find him guilty of treason against professional wrestling, whether anybody else does or not. Is there anyone that would like to defend Miss Carlisle or Mr. Brody? Uh, hold on. Let me get in for a second. Tasha, I can sum this up as far as the Casey Carlisle situation um, in three words. And no, I'm not brown nosing. No, I'm not as wicked would say licking your ass. Um, but three words say it all. She ain't you. Look, put the world in proper perspective. There are wrestlers, there are workers, and there are champions who know how to be champions, and then there are belt holders. Mm -hmm. Champions are groomed. Belt hold, you start out as a belt holder, and you become, you, you are, if you have it, there's that word, it, the second largest word in the English vernacular. And remember, in this country, we speak American. Thank you, Heath Slater. 
you can't hold Casey Carlisle to the standard that you hold yourself to. She sure does. I can. You can, but you'd be wrong by doing it because she's not you. You can hope that she can come close to the standard of excellence that you and that you have set during two runs as the women's world champion. But, Sorry. Okay. 55. And <laughs> sorry, Bugs Bunny line. You can only hope that she can try to get close to that standard that you set during multiple title runs that you did. She's a, I've watched Casey come along to a degree in this industry. She shows promise. Is she being cast in the wrong style at this point? Yes. You make a tremendous, and I know we got 65 seconds left in the segment. You are the pinnacle of what a female heel or heel without gender applied in this business should be. I've watched and listened to your promos. I've watched you in the ring. She can't work that style yet. Does she want to work that style? I don't know. I don't know her head that well. I've interviewed her on BR. She was a great interview. Wicked, you have to attest to that. For what she did, she was a great interview, period. I shouldn't have put a qualifier on there. But she's still young in this business and may not have the right people around her to groom her into the character that you um, that has been thought of that she needed to be or that she should be. That takes time. Should she be a world champion at this point in time? Same thing can be said about Tiffany Rocks, but actually I think Casey may be a touch better than Tiffany. And I've watched Tiffany work. And I remember you... Tiffany's a better wrestler. I also remember you crucifying Tiffany off air when it came to cutting a promo on Beyond Ringside. Oh, yes, I did. Yeah, you did. So I'm not... Yes, I did. I'm not defending per se the situation, nor am I defending her, but I'm defending the circumstance in which she has been placed. And I'm asking you to look at it through an analytical sense. Wicker at the bottom of the hour. Eddie, can I just say this real quick? Yeah. You know, being the product of your environment doesn't usually stand up in real court, so I don't think it's going to stand up in this court either. Well, the bottom line is the NWA Women's World Champion, so-called Casey Lark Carlisle, got pinned clean by a girl down in Florida, so she is not worthy of holding the belt. She's worthless as a champion. <laughs> Period. Uh, by the same token, I've even seen when Ric Flair and Harley Race were both holding the world championship, I've seen them pinned clean in non-title matches. I think it cheapens the belt. Ask me how many times I was pinned while I was the world champion. Wick, toss. How many? I'm sorry. I, I was. <laughs> how many? None. That was a gener- that was an easy answer. <laughs> exactly. With that being said, we're taking our last break of the evening right here on the To Be Determined Show. Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to the To Be Determined Show right here on BeyondRingside.com. Greetings, this is the Magic City Motormouth Fast W Lane, and let me go ahead and clue you in right off the bat. We do things a little bit differently on the To Be Determined show. We get a little bit more blunt, we get a little bit more adult, we get a little bit more explicit. In other words, this ain't your grandpa's radio show. So, brace yourself, anything can happen. Come along for the ride. Anything and everything is To Be Determined. Now, O'Hagan, is there anything that you would like to say to uh, in the defense of Casey Carlisle? Um, no. Well, uh, with everything being laid out, uh, first of all, you cannot be clean. You cannot be pinned clean if you are a world champion. Plain and simple. That that's all there is to it. Second of all, if you get to the venue and it's told to you. That you are, uh, that it's not going to be talking about. If you start to feel that it's fishy, you know what you do? You pack your bags, get in your fucking car, and you go home. And you tell the NWA and you say, but I'm still getting paid. Uh-huh. That's what you can do. If they think enough of you to put the title on you, they will think enough of you to watch your back. Tasha? They always watch my back. Always. I'm never, ever, not one time worried about it. Guilty. Guilty. 
something's going on in the NWA that none of us know about. Hmm. But there's got to be a reason that all this, that, that Casey is having this happen to her, that Pierce is dropping the title, that Colt's leaving out, that all these former NWA places are all of a sudden like, well, you know what? Who cares? Guilty as charged. The sentence, she has to defend herself publicly other than saying, well, when I got to the venue, it was changed. That's no excuse. Plain and simple. And I like Casey. Ditto. I like Casey. But still, that that's you can't do that. Plain and simple. I can think of a worse punishment. A first date with me. Oh, whatever. Uh, oh, Hagen, is there anybody that you would like to bring up on charges? Um, yeah, this is going to be a broad one. This is going to be... Uh, uh oh. These these there's a lot of guys on the independents throughout the southeast and I'm seeing it more in and coming out on the west coast too, where they put on these matches at their small shows and then they're throwing them up all over YouTube and you know, to them this is, you know, showing how well they are, but these are the guys they had the biggest egos because they do a thousand high spots throughout the whole match and it just it looks like a fight scene from Dragon Ball Z or something and they're just it's it's ridiculous and these guys just post their stuff all up over YouTube and it makes people who really truly try to fine tone like like their craft and, and do actually wrestle who wanna actually go out there and be wrestlers. It just it makes us look bad because YouTube's getting overrun with these guys who are just filling up these matches that are well, like awful. And there's people filming it and they love it. And some of them even become promoters. And you know, I think we know we're talking about that one. But it just it just it just kills me that these guys they're the biggest shit talkers with the biggest egos, and they're the worst wrestlers I've ever seen in my entire life. So when you're charging. What would it be? Tr- copyright infringement? Um, it would be uh, unnecessary egos. Uh oh. How about that? How about that uh-oh. one? Uh oh. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, no. That's a, that's that's pretty steep fine there. That, that's pretty. That's. You sure you want to? You hear that? Well, because I mean, look, you've got Tasha Simone on egos. here. Who, well, Tasha Simone is a was is a was the NWA Women's World Champion who defended this all across the country, who. Her charge was not against anything particular against her, but against someone disrespecting something she built. And that, that that's class right there. That's her caring about this industry. You know, so if we all together work to have a amazing product and a good show from start to finish and, a, and a amazing matches, when these people come up and disrespect it by putting on these horrible, horrible matches – and then they go around like, oh, yeah, I'm big stuff. I'm that. Um, good thing my dad owns this place. All right, you yeah. know? So there I mean, we go. We're talking about cop. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So we're saying unnecessary, unchecked egos yes. is your charge, sir. Is yeah, there anyone right. amongst us that would like to defend? And, of course, <laughs> we got we got to start bringing somebody on here just to, fucking take, just to, just to play devil's advocate. Okay. Something. I can do that. Okay, Eddie, please do it really quick. I'll do a real, very short version of it. Yes, sir. Some people look at the opportunity for them to get any kind of exposure whatsoever as a good thing. Don't overjudge when somebody takes the time to video a match. It may not be their best match. Maybe they've taken one too many posts to the head, too many chair shots. Maybe they've, maybe they put too much amaretta coffee made in their in their espresso. But they feel like they may have done something good during that match to get somebody's attention. I agree. You shouldn't have a thousand freaking high spots during a damn match. I agree with the simple fact that you need to, if you're going to put something up on YouTube, it needs to be your best work. But sometimes people will put stuff on YouTube to show a progression. Hey, look, I was shit five weeks ago, but I managed to get, I, yes, I actually said that. Thank you. <laughs> No, it was the voice, the voice you used. I, 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 hold on, I'm going to bring back Bubba for a second. 
You know, I might look like shit five weeks ago, but I've been in the gym training and I've been pumped. I've been, I've been working out every day for the last five weeks and I've had five more matches and I think I've come a long way in that five weeks. Don't you think? So I'm going to put this son bitch up on YouTube and I think people are going to like it. Not always. I'm borderline like freight train impression. <laughs> yes, yes it is. I thought that too. He's making fun of. No, not making fun of the advice. Once, once again, guilty as charged. Now here's the thing. We want everybody, if you see something on YouTube that you don't think is the best work, you should flag it. <clears throat> Give it a thumbs down and flag it. Flag it for, for content. And you know what? <laughs> to me, those flags, and it will be taken off YouTube. Get it off. There you go. Plain and simple. If you see it, flag it. If it's good, give a thumbs up. Favorite it, share it, what have you. Now, I know we have a lot of people listening for this. Now, oh, Hagen, you were there. Oh, shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Eddie, you were there. Oh, shit. Now, can, I, can, I give know... you the, can I give you the setup before this? Yes, please do, sir. Please do. Okay, the setup before this. Um, but where were you? Wanted... <laughs> well, well, first of all, before the show even started, there was a uh, a certain woo sitting at a, a table selling his stuff. I was over there speaking to Gallows, and he goes, hey, man. And the, the nature boy calls up to me and goes, who's this guy with the mohawk? I said, oh, that's wicked nemesis. And he goes, well, man, he's been talking some shit on Facebook. I went, yeah, that's wicked nemesis. I said, I like him. I said, because he's always up front. If he doesn't like you, he'll tell you. If he does like you, he'll tell you. You always know where he stands with you. I said, he's going to be up front with you, and he's going to tell it like it is. If you have a shitty match, he's going to be like, man, that match was the shit. I said, but if you do good, he's going to be like, hey, awesome job. I said, I like him. He goes, well, he's been saying some pretty mean stuff on Facebook. I said, dude, it's Facebook. <laughs> I mean, he didn't call your house and you know, cuss out your wife or nothing. He's just talking on Facebook. Get over it, you know? I'm pretty sure he's been getting, you know, harassed about this for, what, 30 years now? You'd think that he'd be used to it. So that was the whole setup. He was already wanting to know who you were before the show even started. And I did not know this. Eddie, Yo. you know me. Tasha, you know me. O'Hagan, you know me. Uh-huh. I wear glasses. <laughs> I wear glasses. I don't wear glasses uh, to the event. I had no idea that he was staring at me. Uh, Steven Stiles, hell of a guy. <laughs> uh, Jeff McGowan, you know, we're standing around. These are generally the guys that I congregate to. And it's probably breaking kayfabe, but who gives a shit? Because I'm really about to break kayfabe. Uh, <laughs> this is what it's about. This is what it's about. Uh, he did not shake a single fucking hand when he came in. Nope. Uh, uh, Whenever uh, Mad Dog was talking about putting up the ring, uh, Chris Knox and I got lost, and Blur can attest to this because Blur pretty much had to do a step by step how to get there. Uh, we got there, and for 20 minutes we drove around Trustville trying to find uh, North Tavern. The GPS had us back behind some Dairy Queen in some parking lot. We drove all around that, went across the street to the strip mall, went up a little bit. We just didn't go up the hill and then down it. We went up the hill, but we didn't go down it. Uh, when we got there, the ring had already been put up, but uh, we helped rearrange some chairs, some booths, what have you. Uh, the building was in one side. Uh, we changed in the other side, in a whole other building, uh, like a craft building or something, like a craft, uh, like, like crafting, uh, uh, sewing, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, after we helped set up the tables, after we helped uh, put up the booths, uh, we went, Chris Knox and myself, got some flyers and went down to the next exit and handed out some flyers, put out some flyers. You know, just trying to get, you know, the last bit of people in. Like, oh, my God, y'all happen to not be doing anything. On the way back, uh, I see that he's sitting there. He didn't even look at me when I walk in. I walk in, you know, say hello to the few guys that are there. Uh, Damon's, Damon Christopher's there by then. People are like, hey, man. The, there's your boy, and I hear a few people, you know, kind of woo woo woo. Everybody's kind of giving me shit, you know. Uh, where this all began, if we will, is that he went on one of these little Facebook fan pages and started talking shit about the show. 
about a show that I didn't even know he was on. I don't know if it was a work or what have you. All I saw is it says, The Real Nature Boy Paul Lee. He looks like a Ric Flair impersonator. He sounds like a Ric Flair impersonator in every one of his posts because, of course, he – and I have a problem with this, and I get Woo. on to, to, to Pandora about this and to Damon Christopher about this. is uh, If you're going to retort to somebody, one or two is enough. It's just like a manager that keeps interfering. You're like, God damn, just stop. Uh, he had like 15 posts, you know, and a few guys were blowing him up. Like, yeah, yeah. Nobody in those posts said anything about him going to be at the show. He was just taking kind of shots at the show. So, of course, I get on there and tell him he's a piece of shit, he's a mark. Uh, just typical me. You know, everybody that listens to the show, everybody that listens to Shoot Finish, everybody that listens to Beyond Ringside, uh, anybody that knows me in real life knows, as O'Hagan just said. Uh, I'm pretty straightforward. I don't give a shit. I want people to be up front with me. You know when people admit, I don't give a shit. Really, they do give a shit because if you say something to them, they usually – like their face turns red. They cower down. They take it. You can say me – you can say to whatever you fuck. You can be like, you're a fucking piece of shit. You're a eunuch. You have no balls, whatever. You can't tell me anything that my wife hasn't already said to me. So now this guy is eyeballing me or whatever. I have no idea, but he didn't shake anybody's hand. Paul Lee knows Jeff's dad. So, with all this being said, with it, be, with it being built up that he had went on the Facebook fan page, uh, he retorted back to me. Uh, he included Damon Christopher in this and told me that uh, that we had to wear kick pads and that uh, that we need to be at the show. And Damon said, "Yeah, we are going to be at the show. Uh, we're actually the GCW Tag Team Champions, and this is our manager." Uh, he called me a red rooster, Mark. You know, whatever. So I have this all in my mind going on. And I told Mad Dog that I wasn't going to fight uh, Paul Lee because Paul Lee is really Luke Gallo's driver. He's Luke oh, Gallo's shit. bitch boy. He's a bag boy. A bag boy <laughs> is somebody that usually drives a guy around and you know just shoots the shit with him. Usually they're just somebody they beg to be able to show, like, hey, man, you got to book me. But I'm not saying that's how it is with Gallo's now. But I know for a fact that this was fucking Gallo's bitch boy. Uh, so Paul Lee you know, is at the show – Started shaking hands. He's been a little bitch as always. Never met the guy before, but I know these type of guys, and I'm telling you, he's one of them, and you're about to see why. At the end of the show, great show, great event for a great cause. Nothing's happened, nothing's been said. Uh, I didn't shit in his bag. I didn't do anything like that. Uh, went over to go help take down the ring, and he stops me. And he says, hey, man, let me talk to you for a second. We go outside. Uh, as we go outside, we go over by a group of families, you know, like people look for autographs, just kind of hanging out. Uh, one of them happened to be Dame Christopher's wife and uh, his two sons. Uh, you know, they're like, Enoch, Enoch, Enoch. So I kind of like give them the, you know, the fake air punch. It's like, why are you little kid? You know, ah, ha, ha. He's like, hey, man, do we have heat? I said, yeah, I think we do. He's like, man, you go on here and you start talking shit about me on Facebook fan page? I said, yeah, you started taking shots at the show. I was like, you started talking shit about the show. He said, yeah, and? I said, and I'm going to take up for the show because I'm fucking on, especially when it's for a great cause. He's like, man, you can't just go and run your mouth off and just say anything you want to. And and, and, and you got you can't do that shit. I'm not going to fucking allow that. I'm like, you know what? It's cool. I turn around and walk up. He's like, no, it ain't cool. No, it ain't cool. And I stopped. I said, no. I said it's cool because it's fucking cool. He said, hey, man, and I'll never forget this, and it's like in slow motion. He says, hey, man, don't be an ass and get your ass kicked. You guys know I don't take too well to people talking shit to me. Uh, I'm a man of my word. I told him, I said, hey, man, I looked around, a bunch of families over there. Damon's wife and kids see all of this take place. I said, hey, man, I don't want to fight in front of the kids. Let's go inside. I go inside, take my jacket off, and cross my arms. Now, to his credit, he did not hesitate. When he walked through those doors and we had like a, a – what was it, like a drape or something, like some curtains, O'Hagan? Yeah. Uh-huh. To where you would go out so nobody could see in. As soon as he walked in, he walked in, and he fucking hit me in the face. Bop! As soon as he hit me in the face, he stopped, and that's where he fucked up. When he hit me in the face and he had me off guard, he stopped. I come at him, hit him on the front face light, and took him to the ground. Boom, we're on the ground. He's stronger than me. I'm not that strong of a guy. You know, shoot, I don't give a fuck. I'm not that strong of a guy. 
But what you don't want to do is you don't want to get my, get my hands on you. As he battles up, we both fly through this fucking table, this big table, and it explodes. So he gets on top of me, but he grabs my mohawk. He grabs me by my hair. Oh, Hagen, did he not grab me by my hair? What a bitch move. He grabs me by my hair and starts pulling on me you know, to try to stay on top of me because I have my legs wrapped around him, and I'm starting to get on top of him. <laughs> Steven Stiles is like, hey, man, break it up, break it up. I can hear Steven plain as day. I guess at this time, everybody heard uh, the explosion from the table. I don't know anybody come in. I just heard Steven Stiles, and I heard Chris Knox, and I heard Micah. Micah Taylor is saying, no, let him fight. This has got to happen. This has got to happen. Chris Knox goes over there, and he fucking steps on, uh, on Paul Lee's hand and tells him, hey, bitch, let go of his hair. As soon as that happens within a split second, <laughs> I get on top of Paul Lee. I run back, and I punch him in his face, and fucking blood explodes everywhere. <laughs> He starts gushing blood. Oh, Hagen, did he not start gushing blood? He had the crimson mask. He had the crimson mask. Oh, my God, but, but did it make that sound? Oh, it sounded like <laughs> a watermelon. It was like... <laughs> and, then, and then he starts, and, I'm, and I know then I see blood, and I'm one of those guys, I'm like a shark, you know. Blood in the water, blood in the water. But he still has my hair. This entire time he grabs my hair again. Oh, my God, I'd have gotten that. So I grab his hair, and I wrap it around with my left hand, and I have it so tight. You know, his hair is so bleached blonde that, of course, it's going to break out. And I know this. I know I'm about to rip out his fucking hair. I'm, I'm aware of this. I bounced for seven years. The entire time, I'm laughing at this. Now, some people are about to say what I'm about to say. People are going to be like, what the fuck? But this is exactly what happened, and you can think what, what you have of me. I really don't give a shit. He starts choking me, and I always wear two necklaces. I wear a crucifix. And a skeleton to show good and evil. There's a reason behind this. He raps with his other hand, and he stops fighting, and he starts trying to choke me. And so he's pulling my hair, and I have his hair fucking just let in. And people are trying to get us off now. Uh, I have my legs wrapped around him, and I'm fucking squeezing. He starts taking me by my neck closer and closer to him. As I get right up in his face, I'm looking dead in this man's face. As I'm fucking face-to-face to him, I open my fucking mouth... And I'm about to fucking bite his fucking nose clean off his fucking face. As soon as I put my teeth on him, as God is my witness, may, may I drop dead right now. Everybody's listening to this. If you never believe anything in your life, if you, if you don't believe in Santa Claus, if you don't believe in Easter Bunny, if you don't believe in Jesus, let me tell you something. That man believed in all of them at that point in time, and he believed they were all me. Because he let out a scream I've never heard before in my life. He was like, ah, get him off. He starts screaming, get him off, get him off. And then it takes Chris Knox, Damon Christopher, and who else pulled me off of him? Oh, Hagen? It wasn't me. I was just laughing. I want to say Stephen Stiles. It may have been Stephen Stiles. It may have been Jeff McGowan. They pulled me off of him, and he fucking jumps up and starts staggering around, fucking bleeding from his face. And I go, and the first thing I do is I check for my eyebrow rings. They're still there. I check my earrings. They're gone. There's a huge mirror in the back. I go and check. My hair is fucked up. <laughs> and I say, man, my wife took two hours to fix my hair. And fuck that. So I start to go around to the back. Everybody's like, just go to the back, just go to the back. Uh, Miss Sawyer, Dan's wife, saw almost all of it. When she come in, we were already on the floor. Uh, <laughs> when this one, I come back out, and this is the part that everybody kind of popped for. And I said, hey, bitch, how's it feel to get your ass beat by a manager? Every motherfucker in that locker room laughed at him. <laughs> With him standing there, believe that. Oh, and he also tried to pull my shirt off of me, too. He also tried to rip my shirt sometime. So my shirt was all stretched out. Uh, he's barely able to stand. And as I scream that, everybody loses it. So here he is, just got his ass kicked by me. I almost, he almost lost his fucking nose. Because I'm telling you right now, he would have lost his fucking nose. He looked just like the Red Skull. You were going to Mac Tyson his ass? <laughs> yes. yes. He was trying to choke me. If you've ever been in a real brawl, and let me tell you something, and I don't just dislike this guy. I don't have disdain for him. I don't hate him. I disrespect him. That's the ultimate in our business, and you guys know this. What I was yep. doing what I was doing, is I was protecting every single one of us. I was protecting everybody in that locker room, everybody he didn't shake hands to, everybody he's ever been to a show to, everybody that he's ever fucking looked down upon. He walked in there like he was bigger than Chris Knox. Chris Knox can take an Atlanta fucking phone book and rip it in half, and that is a complete shoot. And Chris Knox is more humble than this guy. He is a nature boy ripoff. 
I've been in this business January third week in January seven years. I've been in this business. He's been in it thirty years. You know what that thirty years got him? His ass, his ass handed to him and kicked in Trustville, Alabama, and he bought lost his fucking nose. And I don't well, you know. Fucking... With, with thirty years of ring experience and being a, a skilled mat technician, everyone knows that the hair pull is your your big go to move, right? I mean, I cannot believe you pulled my hair. I cannot believe you pulled my hair. I mean, please I'll tell, tell me somebody got video of this. No, please. No. Fuckers. What the hell? It took everybody to get me off of him. This was not. I let him whoop his ass. ass. This was. This was I one let... of those. Tasha, this is one of those ones. He was fighting for his life. I was trying to maim him. Oh, Hagen, you said you were standing there laughing. You couldn't film and laugh. What the hell? My phone was in my bag. And we were all getting ready to leave. My, everybody, we, were, we were doing the ring, yeah. I still had my jacket on, everybody's bags. I had already put my bag up. Uh, we were getting ready to walk out the door to put up the ring and then leave when all this happened. So a lot of people had my phone was, was in my bag, I believe. But okay, me, well, it's not like you could film it and whip his ass. But, but come on! Say, I know. Let me just say this. <laughs> With all that being said, I did that for everybody because come to find out he'd been a douchebag all around the United States or where fucking have you. He's a rich guy. He supposedly has a lot of money, and you know, obviously that means that he can pay for his own way to get around. And for forty nine ninety five, you can get a stand-up with him you know, for Christmas. That makes a hell of a gift. He's a piece of shit. I don't oh, give hey. a shit. And I told everybody on the show that, that there were repercussions, and it happened. But he got the first punch. I let him get the first punch beforehand. I let him get the first punch. Oh, Hagen, I'm sorry. Well, I was going to say, it's really funny because I, I wanted to see the kind of environment that he's used to wrestling in. So I went to their this crappy website that's on there. It's one of these old, like, 1980s Angel Fire websites. Oh, that God. <laughs> And uh, I'm sitting there, and he's got the little stars falling in the background. It's really shitty. But he's got, like, a million DVDs from his shows for sale. Now, that's one thing if you want to try to sell your the shows that you filmed. What's funny is, underneath every DVD, it doesn't just have what matches are on the DVD. It tells you who wins each of the matches. <laughs> like, so-and-so... Uh, beats so and so by pinfall. So and so beats so and so by submission. I'm like, okay, well, well, hell, why mom? You already know the finish. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm like, there's no reason. I can just go back and read every DVD box and find out what's been going on. So I was like, well, I'm just save me, you know, two pence. <laughs> two pence and a dollar. Oh my God. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we've got to go. Thank you once again to, all, your, to all our listeners. Wait a minute. Hold on, hold on. Yes, sir. Wicked. Yes, sir. Number one, I have to say this. Paul, you could have circumvented a whole shit ton of drama. There's my word again. By simply sending a message over going, dude, I'm working the show just trying to build some heat. And I would have been like, oh, fuck, I'm so sorry, sir. That's exactly what I would have said. You See, guys know me. Something that I have said for a long time. Communication. The ability to put... Syllables, vowel. No, I whipped his ass anyways, just for being a Ric Flair mark. I yeah, there you go. I was going to whip his ass. Look, yeah, Ladies I mean, gentlemen, this has been the To Be Determined show. Thank you, O'Hagan, GCW Heavyweight Champion, uh, for coming out January fifth, Palmerdale. Correct. Yeah. Oh yes. And then uh, I believe the twenty sixth in Pell City. Yes, sir. Twenty sixth, Pell City. Uh, hey, for the quick. former NWA Women's World Champion, Tasha Simone. Tasha. Everybody, make sure you uh, take a close look at the Tennessee area for NWA. We now have a new NWA promotion, NWA Fall, on uh, CW, I think, 18 every Sunday night right here in Nashville, courtesy of Comcast. And you can find me at Tasha Simone, NWA, on Twitter, where I speak my mind there just like I do here. Fast Eddie Lane, back to the Okay, real quick. Uh, tomorrow night, Buffalo Wild Wings in Trustful. Friday in Alabaster. Saturday night, I will be DJing over at Mulligan's over off 280. Um, check out my Facebook page, facebook.com slash Fast Eddie Lane. I'll give you all the info, info over there. Um, Acer, <laughs> Acer 1337 over on Twitter. Thank you for the retweets of the stuff that I've been posting about the show tonight. To Wayne Shell, Hot Ice, to Wallace Wad, Clay Burton, and all the guys over in the chat room. Thank you for posting your uh, Mike England, even whatever the hell your real identity is, for posting who you thought wrestler of the year was thank you for posting over there um 
FastEddieLane.com. And Wick, I'll see you Sunday at 5.30 um, Central for Beyond Ringside. Thank you all for listening. This has been the To Be Determined Show right here at TNT-Radio.net.